Good morning, everyone. This is Matthew Dowling, preaching minister for the Plymouth Church of Christ and lead teacher for Strengthened by Grace Ministries. Welcome to Journey Through the Bible, where today we're looking at Genesis 1, 9 through 13. Then God said, Let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees on the earth bearing fruit after their kind with seed in them. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them after their kind. And God saw that it was good. There was evening, and there was morning a third day. One continent. Well, that's the question we're asking this morning. On day three, God was making the earth take on definite shape as he commanded the land to rise up out of the water. And as we're going to see later on this same day, he commanded the plants to be brought forth. And as these plants would be growing on a land surface, God must have made this dry land with beautiful, nutritious soil to provide what the plants needed. And because God said that he gathered the waters together into one place, Christian scientists believe that the land would also have been in one place. And what I mean by this is the possibility that there was actually only one continent originally, one major land mass on the earth when it was first made. This continent may have had a variety of shapes around its coast with long narrow areas jutting out and so on. The shape of the land may have been divided up by water around the globe so that the areas of water could be called seas, which mean there was more than one sea. You might think about the continent of Australia today. On the east side there is the Pacific Ocean, on the west side the Indian Ocean, and in the south the Great Southern Ocean. So there's a number of different oceans, but it really is one body of water. And it would have been so for the original landmass. Even if the original Earth had only one continent, there could still be a number of seas. If there was only one continent originally, then something has obviously happened to break up this one landmass to form all the various continents that exist today. And that event likely happened during the catastrophic Noah's Flood. And we're going to talk about that when we reach that point Lord willing, in journey through the Bible in Genesis 6 through 9. The other question we have about these features uh, of the earth on day 3 is about high mountains. What was the land surface like when it was first made? For instance, would there have been high mountains like we have today? I doubt there were really high mountains because we are told later on that the waters from the Great Flood covered all the high hills under the whole heaven. Now there's not enough water in the oceans to cover all the mountains in the form that they exist today. But scientists have calculated that if all of the land surface and the ocean basins that exist today were leveled out so that there were no hills or valleys or deep ocean trenches, etc., the water in the oceans would cover the entire earth to a depth of almost two miles. So if the oceans were not as deep as they are now and the mountains not as high, there would have been enough water to cover the entire earth, just as it says in Genesis chapter 7. This would mean the high mountains and the deep oceans were formed towards the end of the flood and even after the flood. Now, Psalm 104 is a psalm that David wrote that tells us a lot about creation. In fact, David puts a lot of information about creation into uh, his uh, psalm there, in the same order, actually, as the days of creation in Genesis chapter 1. He also adds in lots of other information for us as well. For instance, in verses 6 through 9, some scholars believe David might be referring to what happened at the end of Noah's flood. It says in Psalm 104, verses 5 through 9, He set the earth on its foundations, so that it should never be moved. You covered it with deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains, 
At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they may not again cover the earth. Well, in these verses, David seems to be saying that after the water covered the entire earth, God raised up the mountains and then sunk the ocean floor so that the water could run off the earth. This would also explain why there are marine fossils on the tops of mountains like the Himalayas. The creatures were buried during the flood and then the sediments were raised up as mountains formed at the end of the flood. Well, he then tells us that God set a boundary so that the water would never again cover the entirety of the earth. And this fits with the end of the flood as described in Genesis 9 verse 11, where the Lord says this, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. You know, God promises he will never again judge the earth with such a global flood. Now, we have seen many local floods since this time, so this verse is obviously referring to God never judging again with a global flood. We know that though the earth is going to be judged again, but it's going to be judged with fire next time, according to 2 Peter 3, verse 10. So it seems that at the end of Noah's flood, God raised up the mountains and made the deep oceans. This means the water from Noah's flood is in today's oceans. I mean, remember that the next time you're looking at the ocean. You're looking at the water that once destroyed the entire earth, the water that God used to judge this earth because of wickedness. We could even use the ocean as a topic to witness to people, sharing how God judges wickedness as a righteous judge, but provides a way of salvation for those who obey his word. The ark of salvation is Jesus Christ. Now, what did this original land surface look like then? Well, we know there were hills because Genesis 7:19 says that the high mountains were covered with water during the flood. The mountains, uh, though, you know, some translations say hills, which is probably a better word. The mountains, though, were nowhere near as high as the mountains we have today, as I've already explained. So they probably were hills, valleys, flat areas, lakes, and rivers. In Genesis 2:10, we are told about a river in the Garden of Eden. There must have been plenty of places like rivers and lakes with lots of fresh clean water because God made many kind of land animals to live on the earth on day six. Well I think that's a good uh, place to stop here on our journey through the Bible and our look at day three in Genesis. When we come back next time we'll talk about the saltiness of the seas and how great our God is and maybe even what the shape of the earth was like at that time. But thank you for joining me through Journey Through the Bible, and we'll be back, Lord willing, again with more of the journey. God bless.